Hey, Common Ground, thank you for joining us once again. I have Pastor Dave Hoffman with me, and uh, I wanted to have him here today because I want to talk to you about uncertainty, and it's something that young 20s, college, career age, uh, we might be more, we might have more things that we're uncertain of than actually are certain of, and you, you really like being prepared, yeah. And so this idea of uncertainty, I was thinking of what pastor may, might it drive them the most crazy, uh, and you came to mind. I don't know how you feel about that. Well, no, 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 I'm, but th this is acquired over the years. <laughs> well, in just a, a little bit of an intro, we traveled to Tennessee last year for a pastor's conference, and I have my small bag. I haven't flown in years. You have a big bag, and you're a little bit of a soccer mom because you have a a kit, a prep kit for if anything goes wrong, bug bites, motion sickness, yes, yes. anything, you're ready yeah. to go. Yep. So um, let's start with this. When you were our age, what were some of the things that you remember that stood out as just being uncertain, you were um, uncertain about? I, I was thinking about that as I was walking over here, and um, it wasn't climate change back there, then it was population explosion. And I get... I've got something here I want to read you. It's, there was a book out. It was um, the Club of Rome. Uh, it came out, it was the, Wash, the Volkswagen Institute, commissioned by the Club of Rome, and the book was called The Limits of Growth. And so everybody was talking about this. The, all the teachers were talking about population explosion, how we wouldn't have enough oil, wouldn't have enough fossil fuel, wouldn't have enough food by the year 2010. Everybody, it was mass starvation. And uh, it was all, in, and they had all these computer models and everything. And so when people, you know, college age, you know, they talk to someone like me about climate change or someone my age, we just go, yeah, 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 because we've been through it. Uh, every class we went to, it didn't matter what the subject was, they were talking about population exploding and how our politicians were talking about it, how the whole world was at, and you, and you couldn't have more than one kid, maybe two because there wouldn't be enough food. There was young people talking about whether we should even have kids. Is it the right thing to do? And it was just a bunch of poppycock. Um, this, uh, uh, the basic premise was that we'd all be dead of starvation by 2010. So that's yeah, just, you know, so, to take it with all a grain of salt. It was acid rain, for the record, when I was in middle school. Um, and I still haven't had acid rain fall on me, or however that works. I mean, it, it, it's not to say that uh, we, need to, we need to take care of our environment, of, of course. Yeah. Um, well, and, and just, just okay. The reason why I have that little package, I mean, I have all these little bags with all this stuff in it, because over the years I've gone places mm -hmm. that didn't have it. Yeah. I remember being in uh, um, Latvia and... Uh, I needed some. I needed some. I needed some stuff. That wasn't there. Everything I have in those bags is because I was somewhere in the world and didn't have it. S seriously. Which so you come and you're prepared and you're ready, which yes. leads me to. I mean, so when you travel with me, I got you covered. You're good. Except you, you got won't diarrhea, share your. I got you covered. Your you pillow. Got bug bites, you're not I got sharing. you covered. Pardon me. Your pillow. You're not sharing. No. Mar well, everything you know, else. Malaria. I got you covered. I got you. I got. I got no. you covered. But that brings up the point then. Uh, all the time in our lives, something comes up, and it just shakes that. And the big one for you was a few years ago when you were diagnosed with cancer, or at least that's what. That's the most recent one. Most. How do how do you handle that? What? I think it was easier for me because uh, I was older. I'd gone through a lot of other things, but um, it's pretty traumatic when a doctor comes in and says, you know. You got cancer, you got, you know, you got this bone in between your uh, mouth and the cavity going up your brain, and, if the, and what we don't know is the cancer, if the cancer went through this little bone or not. Luckily, it didn't, um, which made my, the prog but they don't know that until they take it all out there. Uh, you just take one day at a time. Um, that's, that's what uh, Jesus said. Um, one of my favorite scriptures is Deuteronomy 31.8. And, you know, and, um, 
Moses is talking to Joshua before they go into an un uncertain future. And he goes, you know, hey, God's not only with you, but he goes ahead of you. And that's always been very comforting for me to know that God has always gone ahead of me. When you get a diagnosis like that, you cannot help but your mind to just run. Sure. Um, I, was, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't sleeping. I'd get in one night and I would just give it to God. Just keep giving it to God. How, so practically, breaking and, that down, how do you, like, do you just vocally out loud? Yes. Lord, yeah. Yeah. Because the devil wants you to fear. Because if you live in fear, you're not living in trust. And every day is a new day and you got to, you know, trust again. Um, but again, I got a whole lifetime of unknowns, uh, in my twenties when, you know, I was, uh, got through school and I don't want to go into it, but I had a good career going. I was making really good money. I, uh, I was teaching coaching. Then I had a, a side job. I, was, I owned a carnival business, but just don't talk about that. But, um, I was going to, with with the business and and, and uh, teaching, I was gonna make a good living, and I had a whole thing planned. And God says, "Quit it all and go to Dubuque, Iowa." And uh, I didn't know. I just had to trust that. Um, anyway, yeah. and it's just been a lot of things. Starting this church, um, there was twelve of us. I'll never I'll never forget that. I if. You've seen it. If you come into my office, it's just that, that picture. Every time I see that pi picture, uh, it's just amazing what God has, has done here, irrespective of Mark and I. Yeah. Um, you, you say that, and I know your heart behind that. Um, but you have been able to, and, and you have the blessing of, of hindsight, uh, of, of you're at a place where, the decades of uncertainty and, and trusting and putting your faith in the Lord, it, it's, you've done it. And a lot of the people watching this, um, it's ahead of us still. Well, the big thing ahead of me is in two and a half years, I'm going to be 70, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to retire. Well, some, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to work. I can't stop working. It, I mean, how does a pastor stop pastoring? I mean, what, it's a call in your life. You, I mean, yeah. do you start uh, driving an RV around? No, uh, so I would still be working here, but that's going to be a, I mean, I don't know how, that's kind of scary for me. I don't know how that's going to look. So how, I, I was thinking, our, our people at Common Ground, the uncertainty is career, mm -hmm. it's financial. I feel like coronavirus has just magnified everything. You know, you, there's a little bit of health and political uncertainty. How do you not let that get overwhelming? <sighs> Oh, this is kind of my. I want to come and and and, and talk to the Comcran about this, but I I know this. There's a basic philosophy out there that you pursue your passion. This is just for the career. You know, this Corona thing is going to come. It's it'll get past. You pursue your passion because it'll never be work, you know, and it, you know, and it'll be fun for the rest of your life. It's a bunch of hooey um, because passions change. When I was in my 20s, my biggest passion was surfing. I go twice a day, uh, five times a week. And at 27, 28 years old, however, however old I was, I was sitting on a board in the reef at Del Mar, and the water was 50-some degrees, and I was freezing. And back then, we didn't have the full, we just had what they call long johns. I was freezing. I said, man, I'm having fun out here. But, and if surfing were my passion, I, I, you know, I, I had a surf shop or whatever, and I would have missed out on what God had for me. When, as a young person, you think about your future, you pray. As you say, God, I want to do your will, and you pursue opportunities. Go to school. You don't go to school. I mean, that's uh, that's uh, that's up to the the person. But if you're seeking God, God is going to put opportunities in front of you, open doors. That's what you pursue. 
not your passion. Because passion is all about self. And where in the Bible does it say, pursue self, and you will, you will find the, the abundant life. You will find the will of God for you. Not, no, you seek first the kingdom of God, and uh, you'll do just fine. I mean, it's, it's not, I mean, you have to go out and apply and, and, and so forth. And if somebody offers you a job in, in a particular area that you aren't too sure about, take the job. Yeah. Take the job. It might, it might open up a whole new thing for you. You don't know. This church is filled. I know I keep talking. No, this this church is filled with people who have made a really good living and uh, who got into things that they never thought that they'd ever get into. Yeah. It just reminds me there's security in the promises of God that no matter what else is going on, whatever uncertainties, everything else, and those things can just mount up. Mm-hmm. If, if we create a list of uncertainties, uh, we could we can be at it for a while, but we can also make a list of God's promises and rest in those. And that if that's where our focus is, uh, we're gonna be a lot more calm and and focused, and and we could trust in those. Another thing with people in their twenties is they're all you know worried about: Am I gonna get married? Can ever can does anybody ever gonna be attracted to me? I mean, am I you know? Uh, and then you're going to get married, and you're going to say, why was I so worried? But um, that's another thing. You just got to leave to God. Because there's nothing worse than marrying the wrong person. There's nothing worse than um, panicking, marrying someone that is not God didn't lead you to, and your parents are going, oh, no, don't. And uh, you marry them anyway, and it's just horrible. I mean, I, I, it's a lot better to be single then to marry that individual that uh, maybe isn't a Christian, that's the big thing. People panic and marry, uh, young people panic and marry someone. Uh, maybe they're going to church, but they don't, they're not really committed. Yeah. Well, let me, Common Ground, let me encourage you in this. Um, Are we done now? If, almost, I'm going to have you pray for us. <laughs> uh, you didn't get through that list yet. Yeah, we did. We did them all. Uh, if... You feel like uncertainty is driving you. It's what you're focusing on more than anything. Then lean into the promises and the, the certainty, the security of our Lord. Uh, can you just pray for everyone watching? Yeah, just um, If you've been to this church for any length of time, you know you've heard me quote this verse. It's in um, several places in the New Testament. And... Romans is just one of them. It's Romans 10, 11. It says, whoever believes in, in him will not be disappointed. Him is obviously Jesus and believes you can, you can put trust in there. Whoever trusts God with their life, whoever seeks him, whoever um, seeks the opportunities that he puts in front of them, when they look back on their life, they won't be disappointed. And that's, uh, do we have a time limit? We might be there, so we'll cut this prayer if we can. No, I'll pray. No, I'll pray real fast. Lord, um, pray for every young person watching. Lord, we want to rebuke any fear about the future, whether it's career, whether it's whether it has to do with marriage, even health, any lie of the enemy about the future. Lord, you've already been there. You've already been to each one of our futures. You've been there, and you're preparing the way. We, above all people, Lord, uh, shouldn't be afraid of the future. You have it. You have our futures. And, Lord, if, when we give our lives to you, you're not going to waste that. You're going to use us. We're going to be fulfilled. We're going to have peace. And we're going to look back on our life, and we're going to rejoice. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for every young person who's watching this, who's saying amen to what we're praying. Pray over them, Lord. I bless them in your name. Who's ever watching this? Any young person. I know, Lord, that you're faithful. Amen.